Mallards, it is Monday, and this evening, Vex went to a show that I actually already saw, and so I think we're going to talk about that. And then I went to another show, but I'm gonna save that for tomorrow's video because currently I don't plan to do anything fun tomorrow at all, uh, and we'll need a video to fill the time. So I'll talk about tonight's show tomorrow, <laughs> and right now, I'm going to talk about a show that I saw and Vex also saw. Do you want to say it? Yeah. Okay. This show is called Static. It is a one-man show put on by Brandon Centauri. Centauro? Hmm. Great question. Not sure. Uh, he is somebody that I met doing PDT shows, and he posted in the Slack channel that he had this show that he was doing, and uh, I'm a sucker for interactive theater. I don't know if you're aware in fact, that's probably a total surprise to you at this point. <laughs> um, and so I immediately bought a ticket and I went to this show on Saturday evening. Uh, and then as soon as I left the show, I said, Vex, I would like to buy you a ticket to this show because you need to go. Uh, and then this evening, Vex went to the show. Uh, so Static is a mysterious show. I'm not, we're not going to really spoil too much of the content. Um, you can spoil that. I just mean like, uh, mostly because there's not a lot of content to spoil. Uh, the way this show is designed is that it is very much like based on the interactions with the audience. And also, uh, the run is over. Well, it's not over. It has two days left, but he's already sold out. So you missed the boat. <laughs> Uh, there will be hopefully an expansion of this world coming in the future, which Vex and I will both be checking out. Uh, but before the show begins, you receive an email that tells you you need a piece of paper, some scissors, something to write with, and that you should sit someplace dark and lock the doors. Now, this is a big difference between the viewing I went to and the viewing Vex went to in that Everybody in my viewing took that shut off all the lights and lock the doors very seriously. And we all sat in almost complete darkness and you could not see any of us on the screen. We were just voices coming from nowhere. A little bit of like glow of the laptop screen, but not any actual light versus I think that in Vexa show people were. Yeah, we, it wasn't like right now where you can see everything, but it was all of us definitely had like a small thing so that you could see our faces, mm -hmm. um, which for me is better because I get scared very easily, but when, please when a sequel is released, and I assume that we'll do it together mm -hmm. and then we'll yeah. be in the darkness yeah. to get the full effect because, oh gosh, this show is so good. It is really, really fun. Uh, it is very much a show about fears and monsters of all types, uh, like actual monsters and also just like mental monsters. Uh, and the way that Brandon does it with the mixture of a phone call that you receive and also the emails that you receive and also the actual Zoom show that's happening and text messages and just like everything wound together is so well done. And also one heck of an undertaking for one human. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine, like, what we do, ugh, wow. <laughs> I can't even imagine also having, like, timed emails like that and those text messages and voicemail. Mm. I love mm. it. Because it's... That's a lot. <laughs> it's texts and emails beforehand. It's also texts and emails during. And it's timed so specifically with the... Start. Yeah, it's timed so specifically with where they are in their performance. Mm -hmm. I... Oh my goodness. Yeah, I have no idea how it works, but I mean, I'm amazed. If you had... Okay, this is... So this is a you can have another techie. person. You can also have a scheduled email, yeah. right? But I know that Brandon does this alone, mm -hmm. which means that if it's scheduled, then it has to be well enough timed yes. to like his speaking to mm -hmm. line up. Or he has to be able to trigger it, but I don't think he triggers it. I was thinking, so... I watched pretty hard to see if that was the case, because I wanted to know. Right. So at some of the shows that I've worked, we use time code, which is just a big clock that talks to everything and says this is what the t running time is for the show right now. And it, when it hits certain marks, can connect to other things to fire off cues. And so, like, I just assume that he has this down enough that he knows exactly where his time is at and probably is looking at a countdown clock or some kind of timing device throughout to make sure that 
to make sure to pace himself at the right place mm -hmm. to be able to incorporate but the... But it was basically flawless. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, it's so good. And like, there was a moment, there are several moments, but there was a specific moment where there's a knocking that comes through the headphones from the show that you're watching. And I could see one of the other audience participants like look around her room to see and like take a headphone out before she realized it was the show. And I'm just like, yeah, the sound design is also top notch. <gasps> uh, it so plays good. like a lot of the background creepy noises, mm. which are like knocks and steps and that sort of like mechanical whine. Mm -hmm. sort of sound and all of that's done so well the creep factor is way high and the interactivity is really fun because it's very controlled so it is very much unmute yourself mute yourself again but it still like invites each audience member in turn in to like actually being a, an active participant in the show so everyone gets asked a question and those questions allow you to expand on your own experiences, which is cool, which I think is like part of what makes each show different. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the actor, Brandon, like plays off against that. It's... And then there are puzzles and like ciphers and I love a good cipher. I, um, so I assume that other people did this. When the email comes through with the cipher, um, I immediately started, um, solving it on the scratch paper that I had with me, which was, I just had sticky notes the mm -hmm. whole time, but, um, it leads to a poem, which is by a man that, uh, the same email, I think, or maybe a different, mm, it's a it, different email, but yes. Or maybe it was a text message. I think it mm -hmm. might've been one of the mm -hmm. texts references that. Were you into his last name? Is that what we're talking about? What? Oh. Never mind. I know that there is a website and yeah. it says you are accepted, but there's nothing to click on that site. We're going to go visit that site when we're done with this video. Great. It's maybe different on mobile? No. Nope. We'll, we'll, we'll go visit. We'll find it. <laughs> no, wait. Read the poem. You deciphered the poem. By hand on scrap paper. That's pretty good. Well, there was a link to the Wikipedia article telling you what cipher it was. You didn't have to figure out what cipher it was. You just had to look at the code and then do it. But I, it meant that I really, 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 really want to watch the show again because I know that I was missing some part of Brandon's performance, which was amazing. But Because you were doing the code solving? Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, the poem is, it's um, part of a longer poem but the part of the cipher that you um, uncover is, Yesterday upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. Oh, how I wish he'd go away. I feel like that perfectly sums up this show. It's a very well-chosen piece. Agree. This is by a poet named Hughes Mearns. Um, he was a Harvard graduate, actually, and this poem has apparently been turned into several songs over the years. Hmm. Um, Really cool. I maybe looked him up after the show. I really like this show. I just want to live in this world forever. I don't. It's scary there. Also, Vex doesn't. Like, Vex maybe wants to go to the show forever, but Vex doesn't like scary things. No, but this particular flavor of scary speaks to the monsters that I deal with anyway, so... Mm. Okay. It's not Fair that enough. different, but I get to watch Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Although... Vex was entirely jump scared by his mustache, so. Yeah. We discovered today that Vex assumes people don't have mustaches. Like, if you are clean shaven, great, cool. If you have a beard, great, cool. If you have a beard with a mustache, great, cool. If you have just a mustache, I have never seen this person before. And when he came on screen, I was like, ah, there's a mustache. I mean, it looks nice. It's a good mustache, but just like, ah. Gets jump scared by mustaches. <laughs> That's Vex's like, is that you one know, of my top facts? Yeah, yeah. But you know, like the little, there's like a little just list of things. And it's mm -hmm. Vex gets scared by mustaches. <laughs> like Vex, they, them, she, her gets scared by mustaches. 
<laughs> oh, so it's above the circus fact. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I got a new top fact. <laughs> Uh, but it's a really, really, really fun show. Um, I will link to the site it directs you to um, because I imagine that stuff will probably be posted there. Uh, and also I can link to the Ticket Leap even though I know that this particular show is sold out because you could look at Brandon's actual Ticket Leap page and if you post a new show, it'll go there. And when it happens, I'm sure we'll go. So that's what Vex did with their evening and uh, what I did with my Saturday evening. And we both had an absolute blast. It's a dark and creepy world and really, really fun. And I'll tell you about my other show tomorrow.